second part of that first section of fur lease. So what goes on in there? For those of you who know about relative majors and minors, this is the moment where we go to relative major. So we used to be in uh, A minor, that's our home key. So now we go to a third up to our C major, which is a relative major. And otherwise the structure is very simple. It's very similar to what's been going on before. And like uh, before, I do suggest you to practice first of all just left hand on its own, and then afterwards uh, just a little bit of that right hand and then start connecting right away with both hands. So what goes on there? We go to C major. It's exactly the same structure as that A minor chord, so similar idea. You just go to C, three notes up, and that's about it. Stretch for the octave, second finger automatically will go to that G. It's going to be approximately in here, so you just move it around, the, sort of like in the prison over here. So C, G, C. Then afterwards we go downwards, like we have done for uh, the first part in our home key. We go downwards to its dominant, which is a G, so basically it's exactly the same idea. So your thumb goes to where your second finger has been, your stretch for the octave is G, and its structure is still the same. So if we go and do the octave right away, then it's a very comfortable roll. I guess a little bit less comfortable than the previous one, so if we go to B, B natural in there, because it's part of that G major chord. Yeah, so G. So here it is, C, G. So just for a little bit, just for a tiny bit here, we do go to that relative major, and then we come back to our home key, so A minor. And then for now, let's just practice and finish that second part on just E with our pinky, that low E. Uh, and then there is, uh, after that second part, there is basically a bridge that connects uh, the second part with the first part. The bridge was just lovely, almost very genius again, because literally what we are playing over here is just E's. That's about it. Now, uh, let's come back to that second part one more time. So what goes on in there? C, G, A minor, and then for now it's going to be just an E. Now, for our right hand, what goes on in there? Uh, so we finished here. Then, just move your hand upwards over here. I do prefer my th uh, thumb uh, right away on that B. Um, some people do prefer to start with the second finger, so up to you. But we do go four notes upwards. B, C, D, E. Then afterwards, your, if you do use your thumb, then your fourth finger is already in the right place and your pinky is actually in the right place. And all you need to do is just reach with your thumb that G. Here it is. G, F, E, D. And then afterwards, we just move those uh, that particular shape of that sentence downwards. It's very simple. It's just a magical number three again. So here it is. Just watch over that. Uh, practice that one by itself a little bit. Um, just watch that with your thumb. You do go G F E. So finish on the same note as our left hand will be finishing up. Um, and over here is just the seventh up. So yeah, and one less note uh, than the octave. And that's it. After we start connecting both hands. Again, the same idea as before. So we do have a continuous conversation between two hands for right hand and left hand. So right hand starts, but now it has that last note. This is, becomes the first note for the left hand. Here's our last note, it goes together. I'm finishing my left hand. So similar as before with the first part. I will uh, put the link for the first part in the description. And just practice it a few times. You will get it very, very quickly. Afterwards, there is a bridge between two parts. That one is very simple again. So literally what we are playing is just E's. And we do, and then afterwards, yeah, just a little bit of a ring, and then we come back. Beautiful, beautiful music. So what goes on in there is the following. Um, so we've got, just think about, uh, in numbers of threes, I guess, in threes. So we've got three single E's at first, one, two, three. 
And then I do suggest some people do like to play those first three notes with just the left hand. I personally really like to play that last note with my right hand because it's already there. I mean, we just finished, so basically it's already there, so it's no big deal for me to play it. So I will leave it up to you. Some books, yeah, do suggest that uh, this is what, what you're going to do. I don't know, so I, I just prefer that one. So yeah, but basically it's just going to be single E's. One, two, three, and they just go upwards. Then we start with three octaves of E's, and they are going to start with that same E, so that's the reason why it's going to be here twice. One octave. And this is where we start changing our hands. Again, conversation continues more like it becomes more like an argument, but there it goes. Right hand, left hand plays exactly the same thing, so this is what you can practice at home. So that you can go and change those ones. Basically, while I'm playing my right hand, my left hand is already going uh, on top, and then afterwards, just the right hand just goes, uh, kind of slides downwards. So here it is. Now, one, two, and then the third octave just goes upwards. And that's it. So basically you can count like this. One, two, three, and one, and two, and three. And that's about it. Practice those syncopes, separate E's, then afterwards practice those octaves. And that's it. Afterwards connect. One, two, three, and one, and two, and three. And then it feels like yeah, that was the part of the argument and then we come back to our usual melody really those 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 very special notes d sharp and e and again we sort of like have those hands saying like i'm sorry it's my fault no it's my fault and so so yeah but there it goes left hand d sharp and e then right hand again goes on top and the left hand I've been asked that question many times. Uh, why is it that I can't play all of that one with just my right hand? Uh, I think there are two reasons behind it. So first of all, it just sounds more like there is a continuation of the conversation because at that moment it felt like a little bit of an argument and then, I'm sorry, it's my fault, something like that. So it just sounds really nice. And another thing, it just looks really good as well. So for, I mean, in comparison. Yes, I could do it like this, but it doesn't look much better once I do it. It's almost like it feels like I'm stroking the piano, so which is great. So it looks better, it sounds better, so why not? <laughs> Here it is. Then left, right, left. Then you have that three times that D sharp and E, but this time it's going to happen only in your right hand. So one, two, three, and then comes back. So uh, the end of that first sentence, B, D, C, A, and then it comes back. So yeah, just so you know what goes on happens, what goes on there. So second part, actually I'll finish the first part. Second part right away. So just basically I need to move my thumb to that B. Four notes upwards, C major, G, A minor, and here's that bridge. about the whole structure. So it goes like this. You've got that first part that we um, learned about um, in the previous video. Then you've got, you can go ahead and repeat that first part. Then uh, you've got the second part. Then you've got that bridge leading back to the first part. And this is where uh, Beethoven suggests, yeah, go ahead and just re replay one more time. Second part, bridge and the first part. So I'll just play it for you. It's a lovely song.